Good morning and welcome to One United Properties uh, conference call for presenting the half year of 2023 results. My name is Susanna Kuregen. I'm Investor Relations Manager at One United Properties and together with Victor Capitano, uh, Executive Board Member and Co-Founder of One United Properties and Cosmin Samoyla, CFO at One United Properties, we will present uh, to you our results for the first half of the year, as well as answer any of the questions you might have. Before we begin, I would like to mention that this call is being recorded and the recording of the call will be uh, updated on our website later this week. As stated in the call invite, by joining this video conference, you automatically and implicitly consented to being recorded. If you do not consent to being recorded, please leave the call. In terms of the organizational aspects, let me first present to you the setup. Firstly, Victor Capitano will deliver opening remarks. We will then move to the second part of the call, where together with Cosmin Samoyla, we will present uh, the key financial results as well as key events that happened uh, since our last call. During our presentation, feel free to type any of the questions you might have, and we will in the chat box and we will answer them during the Q&A. After the presentation, we will start the Q&A session. First, we will answer the questions that we received via email prior to this call. Secondly, we will answer the questions received uh, on the chat in chronological order. Please note that all participants are put on mute um, and have their video turned off. If you want to ask a question, please type it in the chat window. Finally, I would like to mention that today we might be making forward-looking statements during this call regarding the future performance of One United Properties and that the actual results may differ materially. We encourage you to review the disclaimer that we have included in the presentation, which you can see right now on the screen. This disclaimer applies equally to all of the statements made in today's call. Uh, now that the organizational aspects are over, I would like to invite uh, Victor to share some highlights with you regarding our performance in the first half of the year. Good morning. Welcome uh, everybody to our investors call. Uh, I will start uh, with a um, with few general remarks about the market and the business. For the first half of the year, um, our most important indicator, uh, new sales of um, um, units um, reached 152 million euro, an increase of 160% compared to first half of last year. In the same period, uh, the market contracted and suffered a decline um, Overall in Romania of 22.1% and in Bucharest alone, where we uh, uh, have our business with 26.6%. Uh, information from the official uh, national cadaster and real estate uh, um, for real estate advertising. So basically what we've seen in the first half of the year was a huge flight to quality. People finally watch the price to quality ratio more than the price itself. So as money became more expensive, uh, people are more careful with how they invest it. Uh, for uh, the clients, it started to become much more important uh, the quality of the product they buy and from whom uh, they buy. Um, so finally the reputation of the developer and the quality of the product uh, has taken center stage we have a record of 281 million euro to collect from signed sales uh, this year um, we are delivering de delivering uh, almost 1500 units uh, the most in our history uh, and more than all the previous years combined uh, in the same time, pipeline um, of available units for sale with construction started or already permitted uh, that can start on demand, it is very strong, covering at least next five years of sales. Structural demand in the market is still uh, much bigger than supply for a quality product. 
In the same time, um, in Bucharest, there is a low number of permits, which put pressure on prices, upwards pressure on prices, and is lowering the competition. We've seen a, a significant fall of competition in the first half of the year. Construction cost uh, stayed flat this year, uh, although commodi commodities generally, uh, commodities pricing are generally decreasing. Regarding our um, um, margin, I want to reiterate that we target a long-term margin, gross long-term margin in excess of 35%, uh, and all our developments are in line with that. Uh, so even if you temporarily see in the first half of the year a lower margin, this means that the difference uh, will be shown in our balance sheet in 2024 and 2025. Uh, Cosmin will explain later how we account for um, uh, the profitability of the sales. In the same time, our gross leverage decreased this year from 28% at the beginning of the year to 25% at mid-year. And still we have less than 10% of debt to assets. Regarding the market in general, Deloitte has published recently a study, uh, which was uh, featured a lot in the Romanian press um, this month in August uh, 23. And Romanian apartments uh, are still by far the cheapest uh, apartments in uh, Europe. Regarding affordability, it's important to note that although salaries increased in 2023, uh, the exchange rate euro to leo remained flat. The prices in euro didn't increase this year of apartments. So affordability, basically in terms of purchase power, uh, increased this year compared to last year. In terms of um, regarding inflation, real estate continues to be by far the best shield to inflation. Even Warren Buffett recently decreased his exposure on various stocks and increased his exposure on real estate stocks. So this, I think, uh, for me and for everybody is was very reinforcing. Regarding our strategy uh, of uh, yielding assets versus development, it is obvious that development uh, has a much bigger margin. And in periods like this with higher cost of money, uh, the difference between uh, profitability of rented assets and development assets uh, is growing even more. Uh, that is why we decided to exit several yielding assets um, in order to better allocate the equity from uh, single digit return of equity uh, to new developments where we target return on equity of 30%, more than 30% compounded per year. We exited one Herastro office, 21.4 million euro, at an yield around 7%. One North Gate, which has um, a more disadvantaged location compared to most of our, our other assets, we uh, exited, signed a promise to exit at 6 million at an yield around 8%. And we recently sold uh, a commercial lease to Lidl for 8.8 .8 million at an yield a bit less than 6%. Uh, we might continue to do that uh, depending on the demand on the market and on the clients we find uh, with a single purpose to better allocate the equity in the interest of the shareholders. This year, we also improved the liquidity on the Bucharest Stock Exchange. Uh, last year, we were around the top 10, but first half of the year, we became the seven most liquid uh, share on the Bucharest Stock Exchange and the six uh, most liquid if we uh, compare to the free float. Um, we, we were re recently included in Morgan Stanley Composite Index for fr frontier markets. And um, 
from end of August uh, will be included in the mid to large cap category. Um, in terms of performance, we managed to perform better than the main index of the market and the index including the total return, bad total return. Um, and last but not least, um, in difficult times like this for the markets, for the real estate market, I mean, always it's important to know that the most liquid properties are the best located. Fundamentals don't change. Location, location, location still remains the mantra. And center apartments and long-term leased properties are the most desired even when the real estate market uh, has a more difficult time. On the other hand, periphery properties, uh, secondary cities, old and not rented office buildings, lands without zoning or without permit or without a good developer behind, and even selected retail and industrial properties, because these kind of properties can be very easily be competed. All of these categories are suffering during these times. Now I will let my uh, colleagues, uh, Susanna and uh, Cosmin to continue with the presentation and I will come back to the questions uh, in the end. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for uh, participating to the conference call uh, related to the result of the first six months of this year. Uh, before getting into detail in the financial aspects, I want to mention that you will observe in uh, some of our uh, columns that we present the figures uh, shaded uh, uh, portion. This is related to the exceptional event that took place last year, meaning the acquisition of uh, Bukurobor, where we marked uh, a gain on this acquisition and we consider the relevant to present uh, variations of, of this year results compared uh, both including and excluding this exceptional event. Uh, in related to the turnover, the consolidated turnover, this increased overall with 25% up to 843.5 million RON. Uh, and uh, as mentioned, if we exclude this uh, exceptional event of last year, uh, the increase was even uh, 46%. Turnover is including mainly the revenues from sale of apartments, but also uh, rental and tenant services, um, gains from investment property and other uh, operating income. In the same time, the net uh, profit uh, reached uh, 286.9 million RON. Uh, this uh, it's an increase of 13% compared to last year, uh, same period, if we exclude this exceptional event of last year. If we include it, it's a decrease of 17% compared to last year. In related to the residential segment, there is a strong increase in the revenues from uh, residential sales, 56% increase up to 604.1 million RON. And at the same time, the net income, the profit from uh, residential sales decreased with 4%. Uh, this is, uh, uh, let's say, a natural consequence of the fact that the margin of the sales decreased to 29.5%, uh, this being uh, related to the stage of completion of the construction we are, where we are recognizing sales. Uh, basically last year, all the revenue that we recognized was in constructions that were in closing to, uh, to finalization. While this year we have a lot, a lot of revenue in, uh, in um, developments that are uh, just started uh, in the last year the construction and uh, I will come back with uh, uh, more detailed uh, clarification on this uh, recognition criteria because there is also a question that uh, came on the email related to this. Uh, on the commercial segment the rental income and services to tenants uh, doubled more than double compared to last year 119 percent increased up to 62.8 million RON. And we are expecting in the next period uh, this to further increase as long as uh, there will be in one quarter chain park phase two office 
it was reception in February and uh, tenants are starting to get in space and uh, generate rental income. Uh, the other uh, profit and loss positions, administrative expenses, it is a decrease of 37% uh, compared to last year. Uh, here also, it, this is an impact of uh, the non-cash stock option plan allocation that uh, we recognized for the first time last year and we are recognized also this year, but in a lower uh, amount. Uh, other operating expenses increasing 14% and EBITDA uh, reaching 353.1 million RON, uh, uh, increase 18%, it is to the one of uh, gain of last year, uh, and uh, decrease 10% uh, if we include this one of uh, exceptional event of life. On terms of uh, balance sheet, the asset side, current asset grown uh, 13%, up to 2.1 billion uh, RON. Uh, the main uh, generation of this increase is the increase in residential property, 38%, up to 917.6 million RON. On the non-current assets, this also have increased 11%, up to 2.6 billion RON. Uh, the main uh, generating this increase is the increase in investment properties, also 11%. Basically, investment properties count for 96% of the non-current assets. On the liability side, uh, non-current liabilities increasing 12%, uh, mainly due to the increase in uh, long-term loans from banks. Uh, nevertheless, the average maturity for the outstanding loans as of the end of the first half of the year is uh, almost eight years for the investment property bank loans and 1.1 uh, year for the bank loans related to the development of residential property. On the cash position, cash position is a, at a strong uh, volume, uh, decreasing with 30% compared to prior year. This has been generated mainly by the investments and the investment activity that we carried uh, during the first half of the year, where we have many sites under construction. Uh, but even this, the loan to value ratio uh, decreased three uh, percentual points up to 25%. Uh, this is because the value of the assets increased more than the value of the bank loans and the net debt is still uh, at a very reduced level below 10% from the total asset. Also related to the uh, cash flows, the amounts that uh, we have to collect in the future period from contracts that are already signed as of 30 of June, uh, amounts for a total of 281 million euro. Uh, you see here the column on the on the right part of the screen. Uh, we already cashed in this year 113 million uh, euro, and we plan another 100 uh, to cash in from the contracts that are signed already as of now. Uh, normally, this amount will further increase because we will have additional sales also in the second half of the year, and. Uh, we almost, in the first six months, we almost cashed in uh, same amounts that we cashed in in the entire years of uh, of last year, of the last pe uh, prior periods. And uh, also for the future years, 2024, we already have 119 million euro to cash from contracts already signed as of today. Thank you, Cosmin. We are now moving to several business updates. Uh, we start with the evolution of the residential pre-sales. Uh, as Victor mentions, uh, mentioned, uh, while the Bucharest real estate market declined in the first half of the year, one United property sales team managed to uh, sell and pre-sell 466 apartments with a total surface of 39,000 square meters. Uh, if we compare this to last year, we have a significant increase versus uh, 167 units sold uh, last year. In terms of the trends, if you remember from our past calls in the fourth quarter of 2022 and the first quarter of this year, one high district was our best-selling development. It continued strong sales also in, um, in, uh, in the second quarter with 
more than half of uh, half of the units at the development being already uh, fully sold out as of 30th of, of June. Uh, however, an important development uh, took place in June uh, this year when we launched sales at one Lake District, which is our largest development to date, which is going to host uh, approximately 2,100 units. Uh, just within one month, our sales team sold 108 uh, units at One Lake District, what is, um, which is an exceptional, uh, exceptional performance that we we believe will will continue going forward. What is important to mention, however, is that at current state, if you look at the number of uh, units available for sale, um, we uh, we estimate that as of 30th of June, 65% of uh, apartments that that are available to purchase uh, either sale or pre-sale. We're already sold out. That means we have a portfolio of approximately 1.5 thousand units available for sale. Important at One Lake District at this moment, we only have available for sale 793 units. That means over um, approximately 1,300 units will be added to uh, the sales portfolio team at a later stage as the sales progress, um, which will uh, which will help us continue the uh the the good uh, the good uh, trend of uh, significant uh, sales compared to last year when indeed we didn't have uh, enough stock available for sale uh another important aspect to mention out of the developments that uh, that are already delivered to clients meaning developments where the construction is finalized and the clients are either in the process of moving in or have already moved in we only have available for immediate uh, purchase 43 units of finalized stock that is less than three percent of units developed at these uh, at these uh, at these developments. If we look at the key trends, uh, it continues what we saw also in the in the last quarters. The two room apartments, uh, more than half of the units sold in the first half of the years were two rooms. Uh, the, when we look at the total um, total surface of these units, uh, approximately out of all of the sales, forty percent were two room apartments followed by four room apartments, which amounted to 27% of total surface sold, followed by three room apartments. As I mentioned, um, one high district uh, continues to be continues to be for the first half of the year the best seller, where 62 units are already uh, pre-sold, uh, were already pre-sold for our uh, from, by our teams. And uh, if we look at uh, Q2 uh, alone, one Lake District uh, overpassed uh, for the first time one uh, high district with sales. In terms of the key business developments, I would like to mention in uh, in the first half of the year, we delivered one Verdi Park and one Flores Cavista to customers. Uh, both of these developments together host uh, approximately 400 units. And you can see at these developments, the the clients are um, already moved in or in the process of moving in. Um, on the commercial segment, I would like to mention the sale of one Herestrau office that happened in the first half of the year, as well as the pre-SPA that was signed for one of the office buildings within one Northgate. Uh, we are discussing here the smaller building, the larger building is going to be reconverted into um, into a residential development where we have the uh, we also are seeing uh, very good sales for for those units due to the uh, excellent positioning of the development. And uh, on the governance side, I would like to mention that the management reiterated in the half year report that we are maintaining the 2023 budget tar targeting uh, turnover of 1.43 billion lay and a net profit of 530 million with the net margin expected at 37%. We also count the CAPEX costs uh, of approximately 1.2 billion. And um, we also mentioned in the half year report that the general meeting of the shareholders is coming up following our, uh, our uh, biannual um, dividend payment policy. Uh, and the board of directors is going to make a proposal to the shareholders regarding the payment of the uh, first tranche of the dividend for 2023 profits. In terms of the development um, of the of one shares, uh, we saw an uptake in liquidity in the second quarter 
of the year as um, trading on one shares increased 66% compared to Q1. In the first half of the year, one was the seventh most traded stock on the Bucharest Stock Exchange in terms of absolute liquidity and sixth most uh, tradable by liquidity to free float. Our market capitalization reached 3.5 billion and um, we uh, outperformed the reference index bet, which grew 7% while one shares grew 9.23. In terms of the total return, while bet TR grew 10%, one uh, shares grew 10.4%. That includes the um, the uh, the payment of the uh, second tranche related to 2022 profits. Um, and last but not least, I would like to also discuss a little bit about our sustainability efforts. We have published on 7th of August our 2022 sustainability report, uh, which introduced a number of new uh, indicators that uh, we have received in the past uh, requests from, from our shareholders and investors to introduce. You can find in our uh, 2022 report the um, detailed information about the greenhouse gas emissions, scope one and two across um, our all operations, as well as scope three for the office segment. We also introduced information regarding the uh, percentage of the revenues coming from the green, um, green office segment, as well as percent of the green certifies office across our um, commercial portfolio. Uh, as well as several important uh, indicators on the social side, such as gender pay ratio, annual compensation ratio, um, remuneration increase uh, across the employee base, as well as training hours per employee's department. And last but not least, we also have uh, an important uh, section uh, which evaluates the risks and opportunities associated with climate change according to the task force on climate related financial disclosures now um this concludes our uh, our formal presentation and we would like to move to the q and a uh, as i mentioned at the beginning you have a chat uh, window um, where you can type your questions. I see we already are receiving our, our first questions there. But prior to addressing the questions from the chat, we received uh, six questions from, from investors uh, prior to the call, and we would like to address those first. I'm going to read out um, questions one by one, and then uh, we're going to address them um, uh, address them one by one. Uh, the first question is uh, related to the uh, profit margin. What measures are you uh, taking in order to maintain the profitability levels? And here I would like to invite Cosmin to tell us a little bit more about the uh, revenue recognition and how that impacts the, the net margin as we reported from quarter to quarter. Okay, so we are uh, recognizing the revenue in the financial statement based on the requirement of IFRS 15. Uh, basically, from the sales that are contracted, uh, the revenue and the associated profit is recognized over time during the uh, entire construction uh, progress based on the stage of completion. Uh, basically, this means that uh, in the initial phases of the construction, because the land cost is a fixed cost and it has a bigger weight on the total cost, uh, the margin that is recognized is lower. Uh, uh, this is if you are looking in the, our financial statement for 2021, 2022, and 2023, you will observe that 2021 we had the margin, then uh, based on the developments that were in the middle of the construction phase, then in 2022, we had the record margin recognized because all the revenue recognized in 2022 was related to uh, properties that were uh, in the last phase of the construction. And in 2023, we have a lower margin because we have a lot of revenue recognized from development that recently started uh, the construction. Also, this is very important to say, that uh, the revenue and profit associated to this uh, re to this uh, development that are in the initial stage, even if there is uh, uh, less recognition in the initial part of the construction and this year, uh, this uh, difference will be recovered in uh, uh, 2024 and 2024 
based on the progression of the construction and the uh, building reaching uh, finalization uh, finalization stage. Thank you, Cosmin. Uh, the next question, uh, what is happening with Juan Modrogan? And here uh, I would like Victor to, to address this one. Thank you for the question. So for Modrogan, as I mentioned also uh, before, um, it is a complete abuse that we are facing. We have all the building permits by the book, everything approved by the city hall, everything legally perfect. We are sued by a non-profit organization, which is founded by the wife of the mayor, without capital, without liability. And uh, the works are, are suspended for the time being, but the building is almost ready. So we wait. Uh, for the trial in order to uh, have justice on this and to finalize the building and deliver to the clients. Thank you, Victor. The next question is uh, related to Bukurobor. Considering the acquisition of Bukurobor, a, fully, a full integration of it in one United Properties could mean the listing of the company from Bucharest Stock Exchange. What are the intentions above, about the above subject? So for Bukurobor, uh, we focus on improving profitability. Uh, we are investing in the upgrade of the uh, quality of the building with focus on uh, um, energy efficiency and on uh, a better flow uh, of uh, clients for uh, our tenants. Mm. So for the time being, we just focus on this and we, we uh, improve the property in uh, quality and profitability. Um, your vision for the real estate market for uh, period 2024-2025 correlated with the economic context and the fact that 2024 is an election year in Romania is interesting. How do you see the evolution of the real estate market in the current banking context? Uh, so basically, uh, regarding the market, uh, as I said in the beginning, you, you've seen that the first half of the year has decreased overall in terms of transactions in Romania and even more in Bucharest. Uh, we estimate uh, this uh, decline to continue this year and next year. Uh, nevertheless, this is our opportunity to benefit from uh, this flight to quality and grow our business. It's good for us that uh, clients start looking at the quality price ratio, not only to price, uh, we are benefiting from a very high level of trust from our clients, um, which comes from uh, our track record and doubled by the balance sheet of the company with own capital in excess of uh, uh, 550 million euro in accounting. So basically, we are uh, here to take advantage of the opportunities of the market for the uh, coming uh, years. And a related question, uh, do you consider entry to the real estate market in Cluj-Napoca? Um, so um, on the long term, Potentially, yes, but on the short term and medium term, for sure, no. Ideally, for our company, is that our next city would be bigger than Bucharest, not smaller than Bucharest. As you know, Cluj uh, is a small city. Economy of Cluj compared to Bucharest and uh, metro uh, and metropolitan area of Bucharest is, I think, around 15 times smaller. Uh, so, um, as I said in the introductory uh, note, uh, secondary cities are not the greatest place to be in this uh, uh, difficult times for the real estate market. So, um, I prefer 
for the time being to focus on Bucharest and uh, medium term and even longer to explore ideas for bigger cities, not for smaller cities. And the last question from from email. Uh, how do you view the share price evolution for the first half of 2023? Have you implemented the share buyback program? So the share price uh, this year performed uh, reasonable, uh, better than the bet index and the bet, bet total return index. Um, liquidity improved uh, very nice compared to last year. Uh, so now we are the seven most liquid stock, as I mentioned in the beginning, and the sixth compared to free float. Um, our growth target uh, is on average to grow 15% uh, per year. So we uh, fulfill our longer term target to, uh, to increase the intrinsic value of the company four times in the next 10 years. Thank you. Uh, we now move to the questions from the chat. Uh, please type any questions that you might have uh, as the other participants did so far. First question, how many apartments roughly do you target to sell and pre-sell in the second half of the year and full year 2024? I don't know if we have this information public. What I mean, do we have this public in our budget or not? No, for sure we are not communicating anything regarding 2024. What we can say is that, uh, as we mentioned, we have approximately 1.5 thousand units available at this moment for sale and pre-sale, of which 43 uh, units already finalized. And on top of this, we have capacity to add another 1.3 thousand units at One Lake District related to the um, these are the units that are currently not yet added to sales portfolio and potentially next year uh, after the delivery of one Kotroceni Park, also new development, one Kotroceni Towers with additional 1.2 uh, thousand units. This is an, uh, the only update that we're yeah. going to give related okay. to capacity. Yes, uh, Suzanne, I think it's very okay, very correct. So basically... Our stock is very low. We only have 43 finalized units. Um, so we still sell accelerated everything under construction. And this is our plan going on. And basically, we have enough units to sell, to build and to sell that are already permitted for the next, at least for the next five years. Uh, in terms of uh, actual number of sales, uh, um, we will... Uh, do our best to to sell as much as uh, uh, as uh, we are able in uh, the market. So basically, our effort is continuously to uh, to sell with priority developments under construction that still need uh, uh, sales to cover the cost. So this will be always the priority. And less focus if something is uh, finalized and there are just few units left. So this is more or less on the strategic point of view. Residential gross profit margin outlook for this and next year. Is it realistic to increase volume of sales? So presumably also launching new projects and at the same time increase the gross profit margin. Uh, here perhaps uh, Cosmin can give a little bit of color again on the revenue recognition and how it impacts the profit margin. Yeah, so how it looks right now is that uh, in the next period, the percentual margin uh, from the sales that are already contracted and based on the advance of the construction will uh, will show an increase in the in percent in the next period. So basically, what we see now in uh, a lower margin. Uh, is not an actual lower margin, we'll just recognize the profit later down the road. Uh, next question also from Jakub. Uh, the completed investment property was valued at approximately 450 million euro as of the end of June. What is currently the in-place annualized net rental income these assets are leased at? What is the value of investment properties which have been externally revalued as of the end of June? Uh, here I'll ask uh, Cosmin to, to address this one. Okay, so on the first question, 
if we discussed about the annualized, it's in the range of 30 to 35 million euro annualized. And uh, related to the value of the investment that were uh, externally valued, all our uh, investment property are externally valued. Uh, but what we do is that in the half of the year, uh, we check uh, on the investments that had a uh, uh, change in value. And uh, after the discussion with the valuators, we do valuation report only for the investments that we, we have indication that there was a change in value in the first six uh, months. Uh, nevertheless, for as of June, we revalued 80% in terms of value from the from the investment property group because basically we revalued the uh, the big properties, all of them entirely. So 80% of those June has valuation done in June. The other 20% is based on the valuation done in December. Thank you. Going to next set of questions. Does the gain on disposal of investment property in the first half of 2023 of uh, 5.4 million lay reflect the gains related to the sale of both one Herestrau office and one Northgate? Here again, a question for Cosmin. Okay, so here in the gain on disposal of uh, investment property, here we are recognizing uh, the sale of uh, some apartments that were for rental purposes that we sold during the uh, first half of the year. The sale of one Herestrau office is recognized in another uh, is recognized in another line is recognized in the line share of result of associates because here it was a share deal in a company that we are not directly holding we are holding a company and then one had a straw office and uh, one north gate uh, at the moment it's a pre-sale agreement to, to sell and we didn't recognize uh, any impact in the financial statement based on the pre-sale agreement um, do you expect the share-based payment expense to remain at similar levels in the third quarter of the year and fourth as it was in the first and second? Uh, yes, we are uh, recognizing the expense of the stock option plan uh, with a different amount uh, each year. But uh, in the year, uh, every quarter, uh, we are recognizing the same amount. So, we are dividing to four and we are recognizing the same amount for each one. Uh, and last question, can you please can you please explain how the number of total units sold from project start for one lake district reached 366 as of the end of June, even though sales began in June 2023 with 108 units sold by June 30th. Where does the difference to 366 come from? I will let also Cosmin answer. Okay, so the difference uh, in the sales come from uh, units that were sold before launching the retail sales that we, we launched in uh, in June. So there were sales in the past years, but uh, there were this type of early sales that you see also in our report. We are reporting also some early sales. So basically these were early sales in the past years, and now that we started the re retail sales, we included also these sales in the total number of units sold for this development. Uh, question related to 2023. What is uh, the 2023 target budget for net profit after minority? Again, uh, this I will let Cosmin answer in line with the budget. Uh, we are estimating the the minority share to be around 10% in the net profit. So basically, 90% of the profit will be attributable to all the owners of the company. And the uh, next question, after experiencing several quarters of high interest rates, what do you think about residential market demand? Out of all units sold, how many are financed by credit and what's their weight in the sales? And uh, I will first ask Victor to give his uh, feedback on the overall um, market status. Uh, so as I said in the beginning, um, uh, although the market uh, uh, the overall declined, uh, the market for our specific product 
uh, is very strong and uh, we have experienced uh, very robust demand uh, despite of uh, uh, the evolution in the interest rates. Um, regarding the percent financed by credit and the weight in the sales, I will ask Cosmin, but before Cosmin, I will mention that any unit uh, sold with uh, potential uh, mortgage loan to clients has a down payment of minimum 30%, which we uh, believe it is very safe uh, for our selling policy. Yes, related to the weight uh, of sales and credit, uh, basically we will uh, we know this proportion for sure in the moment that uh, we are delivering the unit and the client has to pay the final installments and gets a bank financing for the final installment. But we are, what we are estimating up to now, depending on the uh, payment scheme that uh, are contracted by the client, uh, is that uh, between 40 to 50% of the sales are going to be financed by a bank loan uh, in the end at the delivery of the unit. And the uh, last question, if you have any further questions, please type them right now uh, in the chat. Otherwise, we will conclude this call. Uh, it's a question related to potential fiscal changes. Uh, what do you expect in terms of fiscal changes in the real estate industry coming from the government? What impact do you expect these changes to have at the company level? As well as, is there any client, uh, any change in clients' behavior since the public talks of the new increased property tax uh, started? So thank you, uh, Razvan. Um, the most important is that uh, we don't see change in our clients' behavior. So this is, I think, the most important part of the question. So. Uh, sales uh, uh, go in line with uh, uh, our estimations um, and um, I it's difficult for us to assess now the impact of the changes in the industry uh, but for us it's important that uh, we don't expect significant changes at the company level Thank you, Victor. Uh, I see we do not have um, any uh, further question questions. Uh, what I would like to mention uh, is that the next time we're going to meet this is going to be on 15th of November 2023. We are going to uh, have our call at the usual schedule in the morning uh, prior to that on 14th of November. Uh, we are going to publish uh, our Q3 2023 financial results. Um, we will be next week also at Woods uh, Conference, uh, Frontier Market Conference in uh, Bucharest. If you would like to have a meeting with us, please uh, please let us know together with Cosmin will be available and we look forward to seeing you there. Have a great day. And in case of any follow-up questions, we remain uh, available at investors at uh, one that role. Thank you.